great finish. He's going to win. George puts up a long way. Australia nails it. Kayla G for three. She keeps it off, almost a half point from Melbourne, it's gone! And the look on her face says it all. Round 14 of the Signet WNBL is Indigenous round. And tonight we are in Townsville for a crunch clash between the Fire and the Bendigo Spirit. This game will be played on the traditional lands of the Woolgara Kaba and Bindle people. We acknowledge them as the traditional and ongoing custodians of the land and pay our respects to their elders past and present. On the court, the Fire are arguably the hottest team in the comp right now, winning eight games on the trot to surge in the top spot on the ladder. But they're coming off double overtime just three days ago, and they face a Bendigo side desperate to win because to finish in the top four, Bendigo have no choice but to keep winning. All signs suggest we're in for a cracker at the Townsville Entertainment Centre tonight. Hello and welcome, Ben Waterworth with you, and we have a treat for you tonight. On commentary debut is Southside Flyers captain and two-time WNBL champ, Amy Rochi. Amy, welcome to the commentary box. You picked a pretty good night to make your debut. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I, uh, I think we're in for a very good matchup tonight. I reckon we are too. It's a top four clash as we have a look at the WNBL ladder, Amy, and we put some context around why this game is so important. As I mentioned before, Townsville have surged into top spot on the WNBL ladder. Bendigo's still fourth. They've been in the top four for most of the season, but Perth are really coming, aren't they? Yeah, and both teams have, you know, something to play for tonight. Townsville is after that highly sought after home court advantage, mm. um, which you can only get if you finish in, in the top two. And then Bendigo have everything to play for tonight. Uh, Perth are hot on their heels, and I think a win tonight uh, would relieve that pressure just a little bit. No doubt. And Bendigo also three straight losses as well for them. So they want to try and get some momentum in the back half of the season. Amy, let's have a look at how the Townsville Fire side will line up tonight. Gosh, it's a pretty good lineup when you've got Shyla Hill and Lara McSpadden, Zatina Racuso and Kate Gaze coming off the bench, isn't it? Absolutely. This Townsville starting five packs an absolute punch at the offensive mm. end. You've got Lauren Nicholson, who's leading the league, oh, not leading the league, sorry, but she's third in the league for scoring. Steph Reed leads the league in assists um, but I think the person that's in you know the hottest form right now would have to be Carly Samuelson. Yeah. Um, she's coming off a 31 point game on Wednesday 7 of 10 from the three point line. Um, I'm excited to see her form tonight. And you, you mentioned her recent form so first nine games averaging the 10 per game. Her last eight games nearly 20 as well and her field goal percentage is uh, she's the, the, one of the most efficient players in the WNBL and most of those points as well come from beyond the perimeter. So that is the, the definition of efficiency. Hopefully she has another big game for us tonight for the Townsville Fire. As we turn our attention to the Bendigo spirit and why this is such a must-win game for them. A bit of Kelsey Griffin has been named on the bench. Uh, we're... Whether she gets out there tonight, I'm not 100% sure. Bendigo sort of indicated a couple of hours ago that she wasn't um, going to play. But it means that Abby Werung has got the start tonight for Bendigo Spirit. And Abby Werung is in such hot form as well. She's shooting the three ball, I think, the best in the league at the moment. Yep. Um, you know, I think they're going to have um, potentially a little bit of trouble matching up on the bigs. Um, Alicia Froling is an absolute workhorse in the key. But, you know, you ask her, I'm sure she'd tell you she's not a five man. So... Yep. Uh, they might need Megan McKay to step up off the bench tonight. What about Anna Lee Maley? She continues to have a big season. A, 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 maybe an outside chance to go back-to-back -back MVP. Yeah, definitely a chance. Um, you know, look at those stats. First in the league for offensive rebounds. She gets her teams those extra possessions. Um, and, you know, 16 points per game and 11 rebounds per game. Um, she could definitely be up there for MVP this year. It's going to be a very tight race for the Susie Bakovic medal, no doubt about that. So we're almost all set for a start here between these two sides. It is going to be a fascinating contest. The Townsville Indigenous uniform, the jersey represents uh, welcoming the players to the Bindle and Woolgaroo Cabba community, the first known people to have lived in the Townsville region. It's been designed by local artist Sabi Baker. Spent two days designing it and he really hopes the exposure can help him turn his hobby into a profession. And Bendigo's Indigenous Round jersey hosts the WNBL's league-wide artwork created by Tamara May Murray. 
that depicts the essence of basketball and the unity of the game that brings us all together. They are terrific uh, jerseys. We'll see plenty of that. We'll see, we'll see it all night here on Nine Now uh, as we continue to celebrate Indigenous Round in the WNBL. Underway from Townsville. Great to have your company wherever you're watching around the planet for this one. It's a top four clash between the fire and the spirit. And the ball in the hands of the fire. Samuelson to get us off to a hot start. Couldn't quite. And Ruth couldn't bring down the offensive rebound cleanly, but it is still a Townsville ball. And uh, it'll be uh, an inbounds pass here for the fire. I think we're going to see a good rebounding contest tonight. You know, Annalie Maley's a beast on the boards, but so is uh, Ruth. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Kuzo again off the, off the bench as well. Samuelson. Trying to work her way around the perimeter. Hawkins catch and shoots. We've seen her hit a dagger a couple of nights ago against Perth. And she hits a three here to get scoring underway. Three zip. Star import continuing her excellent season for the Townsville five. Bendy goes first look on offense here. Here is Alicia Froling. Handing it off for Ali Wilson. Pretty important round for Ali Wilson. Lovely step inside for Alicia Froling who lays it in for two. Hawkins for Nicholson and Reed. Good to see Nicholson and Reed available for tonight. Reed trying to find her way through the key. What a pass. Hawkins for three. How, how good. Again. It's going to be interesting to see how Bendigo defend that pick and roll tonight. Um, you know, that's their bread and butter. Steph Reed coming off that on ball. And uh, you can pull. Oh. Turnover. Hawkins for three threes. You know, that would have brought the house down. Good and quiet. Yes, that we'll watch that with. Interest, Steph Reed is in terrific form, right up amongst the top in the uh, players in the competition for assists this year, Steph Reed. So was called on Lauren Nicholson. And it is, yeah, pretty handy having Shiley Hill on the, the fire side now, Amy, considering that, you know, Lauren and uh, Steph Reed at the moment are game to game propositions with their respective injuries. Yeah, they've been playing a lot of minutes, so I think, you know, that's a luxury, having another guard to come off the bench, give them a little bit of a rest, um, and so too having Satina Akusu mm. coming off the bench, back from injury. Nicholson, all nylon, on the fire, hot from deep early. Been one of the best three-point shooters in the WNBL for several years, Lauren Nicholson. And she's given the fire a 9-2 start and another Bendigo turnover, although Roof couldn't quite keep it in field of play and the spirit will get the ball back remember these two uh, the fire rather coming off double overtime on Wednesday night one of the most incredible games we've seen in years in the WNBL a terrific win over the boomers by the, the fire the spirit of thought for Tiana Hawkins, who played all 50 minutes that night, as Abby Wehrung floats it in for two. It doesn't seem to be a factor right now, but I do wonder whether, you know, the fatigue uh, will affect them from Wednesday night's game, but let's hope not. Roof, quick hands off for Samuelson, but there's Kelly Wilson. Still can't get it past Kelly. Kicks it out for Ali Wilson. Great team basketball again, Froley the, Froley the beneficiary, lays it in for another bucket. I think that's the basketball they need to play right there, get stops, rely on their, you know, quick athleticism. As I spoke about before, the tough matchup in the key with the bigs, but, you know, they're quick, that's their advantage. And double dribble called against Lauren Nicholson. So, an uh, uh, important stop here for the Spirit because it's been a hot start by Townsville. Three minutes into this game. As always, the Townsville folk making plenty of noise at the Townsville Entertainment Centre. It's another foul on uh, the fire. Steph Reed will be called for that one. Second team foul for Townsville. Three minutes into the game. This is a nice little matchup between Steph Reed and Kelly Wilson. Yeah. Both first and second in the league for assists. So nice little point guard masterclass for us. Master and apprentice going head to head. Here's the master. Wilson trying to find a teammate. Does in Froling and she's almost had her third field goal of the night. The right hand attempt not quite dropping that time but Seeming like a better offense from the, the Spirit in, in the last couple of minutes, Amy. Here's Hawkins. Trying to spin her way through. Oh, nice finish. Gets it to go and she'll head to the line for an extra. 
that's going to be a really good lock for Townsville tonight, going inside to Tiana Hawkins. She's just so tough in there. She's got the height advantage. So, you know, Bendigo are going to have to work together to, to stop her tonight. She's an excellent free throw shooter as well. 86% free throw shooter so far this season, Tiana Hawkins. Continuing her outstanding season and seemingly getting better with every game that she plays. Averaging 16 per game. Here's Kelly Wilson. Goes herself and is denied emphatically by Hawkins. Timing personified. Kelly Wilson's usually really good at that little right-hand right hook too, avoiding the block. So good job by Tiana. Still 14 on the shot clock here for... The Spirit, lovely lob pass inside from Ali Wilson for Alicia Froling gets two and potentially one more to come. Hot start for Alicia Froling, who's coming off an excellent NBL one season. She's brought that form into the WNBL and really thriving is sense aimed with the extra responsibility she's been given at Bendigo this season. Definitely, and, and sorry Alicia, I said you're not a five now. <laughs> that, was, that was a hell of a seal and finish, so props to her. I'm sure it'll get back to her a little after the game. That's all right. So she'll have a second crack here. There's a bit of early movement. Another key from the fire. And it pays dividends for Froling, who compete, completes the three-point play. And uh, the Spirit just with a, a little run here to themselves back into the contest. Must-win game for the Spirit. The Perth Lynx are coming hard. Trying to squeeze into that top four. I think I've been in the top four for most of the season. Hawkins is hot. Couldn't get that one to go, but she's got two free throws to come. What makes her such a, a difficult player to guard, Tiana Hawkins? Amy, she seems like a player that can sort of get you in multiple ways. Yeah, she's very athletic and quick and mobile. So, you know, she can get you in transition running down the court. Um, and as you saw there, she's, she's coming off screens from the wing. So she's on the move. Mm. Um, and, and really hard to keep up with. Excellent start to 2023 for Tiana Hawkins. On uh, at least 15 plus points in all of her last six games. <laughs> Tiana Hawkins, and it's included three double doubles, including 17 and 14 against uh, the Melbourne Boomers a couple of nights ago for a lazy 50 minutes. And a hot start here. She's got 11 points in four minutes. Here's Ali Wilson. Look at the speed. Puts the foot on the accelerator and lays it in for two. Lovely finish from Ali Wilson. Quickly, though, Hawkins is causing some big headaches for this Bendigo defence. You know, they're obviously making a conceded effort to get it into her. And as I said, that was going to be a tough matchup for Bendigo tonight. So. I'm not sure what sub we're seeing here, but potentially Megan McKay. Mm. And this is probably where they they really miss having a, a fully fit Kelsey Griffin in the starting five, Amy. Absolutely. She makes such a massive difference. Um, for Bendigo, she's, you know, their second leading scorer and, and second leading rebounder. So, um, you know, they had her last time. They played the Townsville Fire and managed to get the win. So she could have made a big difference. We called it. Uh, Meg McKay is into the game after the substitution. So we'll watch that matchup now with interest. Uh, Akuzo has the matchup down low now on McKay as Bendigo worked the ball around the perimeter. Kelly Wilson for Levy, who's also on the floor. And Akuzo will be called for the foul as the reigning Susie Bakovic medalist will head to the line. It's been a pretty big uh, couple of uh, days for Annalie Maley, continuing her awesome form for the Bendigo Spirit, but recently got a training contract in the WNBA, Amy, with the Chicago Sky. It could be a, a big, serious opportunity for, uh, for Annalie Maley. Yeah, and I, I think I'm right when I say she was an injury replacement last time round. That's mm -hmm. why she got a couple of games for the Chicago Sky. So for them to be inviting her back yep. uh, is a really positive sign for her. They obviously liked what they saw. A couple of crucial free throws there for Maley. And the Spirit within four points here. There's that same play again into, into Hawkins. And it comes off. Tiana Hawkins having a big night. My word, she's up to 16 points. 
Tiana Hawkins 16, Bendigo 13. Five minutes into the first quarter, McKay though receives a lovely pass from Levy and hits the scoreboard. That's what Tessa Levy can do off the bench for this Bendigo outfit. Lovely lob from Akuzo. And Nicholson is fouled. It's the fourth team foul of the spirit in this quarter. Bendigo is looking really good when they're when they're dragging the bigs out into that on ball. That was a beautiful dish by Levy down the other end there. Nicholson and Kelly Wilson going head to head here. Samuelson would have the inbounds pass. Hasn't been required to score yet. Nicholson thought about that. Trademark step back three, but you can't keep Kelly Wilson out of the game. That left hand layup drops. Fast break. Exhilarating fast break from the WNBL games record holder. Samuelson gets around Ali Wills. What a pass for Kuzo. At both ends of the floor at the moment, we're seeing some terrific team basketball. McKay and Kelly Wilson pick and roll here for McKay underneath. Terrific game. Same thing again. Kelly Wilson coming off on balls is looking great for Bendigo. For all of Hawkins' work, Bendigo still within the two-point shot. A heel on the floor here for Townsville. And there's an offensive foul against Hawkins as Annalee Maley hits the deck. Here's a look on replay. Played by Annalee Maley to earn the offensive foul. Fire with a 21 19 lead. Is, uh, it's always an, an intimidating place to go to Townsville, Amy, to uh, to play your basketball. The home crowd uh, really gets behind their home team. Yeah, when you play in these sort of, um, you know, smaller towns, they all get behind their team. So, very loud, very daunting. Natalie Maley. Well, Megan McKay, you can tell by her face, reasonably flabbergasted by that call from the referee. Thought it was off. The hands of Hawkins, being deemed a Bendigo ball, though. His heel, exciting prospect, Shyla Hill and Tiana Hawkins working together for the back half of this WNBL season. Lee Wilson guarding Samuelson like her life depended on it. And good hustle defense from Bendigo. They forced the turnover. No easy shot so far for Carly Samuelson, except for within the first 10 seconds of the game. Is that, is that the way to go when defending Carly Samson? Do you try and send someone uh, to her? Do you sort of dedicate a, a defender to, to guard her? I think you have to, especially after the, the form she's been in. Um, you know, to get off 10 threes in a game and make seven of them, you've got to be able to make an adjustment. So if they can, you know, get close enough like they did there and force it a back cut, then I think that's a better look for them than letting her get a three off. To have the thoughts of Southside captain, dual WNBL champion Amy Rochi, nine now tonight. And here is Ali Wilson kicking it out for Levy, who has six to shoot. Oh my word, that would have been a lovely layup. Didn't quite come off. Great rebound from Maley. That's what she does best. Number one offensive boards play in the comp. Earns this trip to the free throw line. You know, her ability to grab those offensive rebounds is so valuable to Bendigo. You know, giving them those extra possessions, um, you know, that'll mean a lot come down to the end of the game. So she's back to be medalist from last season. Just a player that, uh, as she's become, I suppose, more accomplished in the, in the competition. It's just added more strings to her, both particularly her outside game. You saw her putting up a three just beforehand. And as well, she's uh, starting to become a, a more complete player. Just over three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Fire in the bonus. Spirit with four fouls to their name. Kuzo, hands off for heel. Great defense from Wera. Akuzo finds a way through, though. Bulldozes her way through to lay it in for two. Great to have a fit and firing Zakina, Zatina Akuzo in the WNBL. As Bendigo throw the ball away. 
We'll see a couple more substitutions. Courtney Woods will be injected into the game. Has had a wonderful breakout month. A lot of uh, starting opportunities for the Townsville Fire. Made the most of it. They've really uncovered a jet this season. The, the Townsville Fire. Here is Woods. What a pass for Hawkins. Might need to change their scout on Tiana Hawkins. She's on fire. 19 points in the first quarter, including three of four from deep. I haven't got the stat in front of me, Ben, but has she been shooting the three ball well? Unbelievable start as Lady responds with her own triple at the other end. Reed crossing over, kicking it out for Shyla Hill. Oh, didn't quite get the lucky roll. And Maley is there for a rare stop for, for Bendigo. Maybe finding some confidence in recent weeks for the Spirit. Ali Wilson for Maley. Thought about the handoff for Werung. Lovely patience shown, and McKay rewards that patience with the bucket. Twenty six twenty five as Hawkins trying to work around baseline. They reset with ten on the shot clock. This is where Steph Reed is at her best in this situation. Normally finds a way through or finds a teammate. Heel from deep. They couldn't go. And another stop for the Spirit with an opportunity to regain the lead here after a fast fire start. Lady trying to thread the needle there. Maley put it up, but there was a foul beforehand. They want the points to count. Referees will confer now. And it looks like the points. I didn't quite see where the foul was. Oh, it's on McKay, is it? Yeah, so McKay will be heading to the free throw line. They are already in the bonus, though. The fire. The foul looks like it came before the melee shot. McKay will have two free throws anyway. McKay coming off the bench predominantly so, so far this season. And this is both. Big let off for Townsville just before quarter time here. Reed for heel trying to create some screens at the top of the key there five to shoot here for Steph Reed another look away pass Roof pulls the trigger for three couldn't get it to go and they get a fresh 14 seconds here and an eight second differential between the two clocks Reed gets the screen from Akuzo kicks it out for Woods has to put it up now Courtney Woods doesn't get it to go. Seven to shoot here for the Spirit. Mailey lobs it. Just had a bit too much heat on it. Woods will put up the prayer. And the bank was not open for Courtney Woods, but that has been a wonderful start to this game. This is a clear t match between two top four sides. It's Townsville 26, Bendigo 25 at the first change. Ben Waterworth with you alongside Southside Flyers captain Amy Rocci and my word, have you been treated to a masterclass, Amy, by Tiana Hawkins in that first quarter? 19 points in a quarter. Have you ever scored 19 points in a quarter before? I don't think so. Right. <laughs> but what a, what, what, just again, you talked about how difficult she is to, to, is to guard, but, but what, from a Bendigo perspective, it, it feels like they need to sort of really lock down defensively or. or uh, change their tactics defensively on Tiana Hawkins as we have a look at our first quarter highlights. I mean, it's difficult because she's, you know, she's playing an efficient game right now. She's six of seven um, from in the paint and then three of four from the three-point line. So she's hurting them from everywhere at the moment. Um, you know, that particular play there where we see her coming off the back screen and, and sealing in the key has really hurt them. So she has the 19 points of Townsville's 26 to start this game. And, uh, 
What a privilege it is to have a player of Tiana Hawkins' quality in the WNBL so far this season. She actually, we were talking about a, a training contract for Annalie Malley with the Chicago Sky. Tiana actually has one with the with the Mystics in the, in the WNBA uh, coming up. So a big few months for her. As we have a look at the stats so far in this game. Uh, and for uh, Bendigo, shooting at a, at a pretty good clip as well. A pretty efficient 67% and 18 points in the paint so far, Amy, for the Bendigo Spirit. Yeah, and both teams are shooting the ball so well, as you can see there. So I think both of these huddles, the coaches will be focusing on the defense and how they're going to slow each other down. Um, I think for Bendigo, what's looking really good for them is getting stops and then pushing the ball in transition. Yep. Um, they look good when they're playing fast. Kelly Wilson coming off on balls. Um, but yeah, both teams, I think, will be discussing their defense right now. 26-25 mm. lead for the Townsville Fire. 18 points for Hawkins, as I mentioned. Three for Nicholson and four for Acuso, the other scorers for Townsville. And from a Bendigo perspective, pretty even spread. Seven for Froling, six for Wilson. And off the bench... McKay with four and a, and a triple for Tessa Levy as well, who played six really good minutes in that quarter. Back underway in the second quarter. Have you Werung with the handoff for Ali Wilson, for Kelly Wilson, for Ali Wilson, for three. Couldn't get it to go. And the roof brings down the rebound. Great to have your company wherever you're watching this top four Signet WNBL clash. Townsville and Bendigo on a Saturday night. An Indigenous round in the WNBL. That is deemed off Tiana Hawkins' hands and out of bounds. Kelly Wilson said on the, the WNBL show during the week with uh, with Megan Husswaite that Abby Werung is Bendigo's best defender. She's also prolific at the offensive end of the floor. And you mentioned pre-game how she's shooting the ball so well from beyond the arc at the moment. She's actually, uh, fun fact, shooting the three ball better than she's shooting the two ball. So nice. forget about layups, Abby. Just yeah. let it fly from the three-point line. I like that. Coming from a pretty handy three-point shoot as well in Amy Rochi. Here's Reed. Gets around but Abby Werung. We're just talking about her <laughs> awesome defense. But Reed finds a way through that defense. I mean, it was good defense. Just yeah. better offense. Tough finish. What a young star Steph Reed is. Great things ahead. That young player. Fire with the opening field goal of the quarter. Ali Wilson, what a pass again inside. And Alicia Froling able to get the two to go. That is dish number four for Ali Wilson. They've got seven assists, Bendigo. Townsville have eight. Both teams showing off. Terrific court IQ. Steph Reed. Oh my word! How did she pick that up and then how did she get it in? She has some very crafty finishes in the paint. It's very impressive. Jaw dropping stuff from Steph Reed. Seeing some terrific individual performances tonight in Townsville. Kelly Wilson almost had another play come off there for Froling. Hawkins read it though, and Woods couldn't quite do it. No one was plucking that ball away from Annalie Maley. On the back goes Maley, and then the mid range two didn't quite jump. Alicia Froling had it ripped away from her as well. Didn't quite have the second opportunity, Alicia. Hawkins catches, and she's over the 20 point barrier. Great pass by Steph Reed there. Really nice vision. I was about to say they need to slow it down here and get a good offense because we've been up and down, but you'll take that any day. Definitely. Recognition there from Reed. Perfectly executed pass. High quality game this. Ali Wilson pulls up all oxygen. And straight down the front there of Courtney Woods. And they make them pay. Shyler here. Oh my word again! A reverse off balance. Probably should have gone with the left hand, went with the right, and somehow got it to go. Unbelievable stuff from Shyler Hill. First time out of the game is called, and this time out is brought to you by CTM Sport. If you're considering traveling in state with your basketball team, consider CTM Sport. They have a competitive, innovative, and customized travel solution which will put your team on top. For more information, head to CTM Sport. 
Townsville.com.au. Some pretty impressive plays from the Townsville guards to start this quarter, Amy Rochi. Yeah, Steph Reed and Shyla Hill must be working together at training because they're both uh, showing us some really nice finishes, um, really attacking the bigs of the Bendigo spirit and getting downhill. It's, it's really nice to see. Bendigo have, have, you know, made a slight adjustment and have tried to take away the bigs game, but now the guards have come out to play. It's Shyla only came in a couple of weeks ago, flew into Perth the day before the game and played her first game there. Yes, she did play in the hub season with Townsville. She played under Shannon Seabon, but it, it must take at least a, a couple of games, maybe in a couple of weeks of, of training as well, just to, to get the, the rhythm and the flow of the team. Yeah, I think, and I think you could say the same for the imports even that come in. Um, you know, Carly Samuelson, we made a point of her form only getting better as the season went on. So she probably had a bit of an adjustment period there and, and trying to find her role within this team. So the five had a really strong start to this quarter. 8-2 run to start the second term and they're out to an equal game high lead of seven points. Great atmosphere at the Townsville Entertainment Centre for Indigenous Round in the WNBL. Kelly Wilson, Kelly Wilson, Ritz for teeth and catches in the space. Screen from Alicia Froling. Kelly Wilson goes to work and puts up the mid range to herself. Good start for Kelly Wilson in this game. Hasn't been a high scorer this season, but she's up to eight points early. Roof. Samuelson hasn't caught fire yet. Hawkins is the definition of caught fire. Roof is fouled. Very, very handy pickup for the Townsville Five, Michaela Roof. See him. Uh, that time in camera, including a season with all those visa troubles and just couldn't work uh, some permanent residency troubles and couldn't quite get out in the court that season. Shyla Heel goes to work, floats it in. That's trademark Shyla. They get to seven points. Haley thought about the triple attempt. Here's Werung. Don't get yourself in the perimeter. Abby, as we heard from Amy before. <laughs> we want to see a jacket up for three. It's dead. They've got the ball back here at Townsville. Samuelson kicks it out for Nicholson. And Lauren Nicholson couldn't quite get it to go off the glass. Plucked by Roof. Oh, I'm not sure if that was intended for Nicholson. It's come off anyway. And Nicholson banks it in. Game high nine points for Townsville as this strong start to the second quarter continues. Ali Wilson lost control. Tiana Hawkins got it. Then you go back quickly on defense to ensure no fast break. Roof trying to work her way inside, but couldn't quite get that one to go. You're sort of a, a Bendigo leader at this stage of the game. Amy, sort of what's, what's going through your mind? It is kind of at that point now where it, it is threatening potentially to get away from the Bendigo Spirit, even though there's 25 minutes left in, in the game. Townsville have got the momentum in this one. They do, but, you know, in basketball, the momentum swings all the time. Um, you know, as we said, Townsville are coming off that double overtime. Um, so Bendigo just need to stick with it. Keep getting stops, keep running. Um, and I'm sure if they can edge this back by the end of half time, um, we'll have a game on our hands. Referee's just waiting for the clock to tick over. So we are in Indigenous round in the WNBL. As part of the WNBL's Indigenous Round, Basketball Australia has created a cultural awareness quiz to provide practical resources for the WNBL clubs and community to learn more about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. As the results have identified topics you could improve your knowledge on. Educational resources available at wnbl.basketball. Head there now to take the quiz. Samuelson. And he lost control. Tight defense from Kelly Wilson. 
And he'll put the elbow out. Nicholson regains control, and Hawkins is free for freeze. Oh, my word. Well, you can start hot and sometimes go cold, but she's still got it. 24 points for Tiana Hawkins, 4 of 5 from beyond the perimeter. And it's ballooned out now to a 12-point advantage in favour of the Townsville Fire. Flexing their muscle. This team that is on an eight-game winning streak. No signs of rustiness, or fatigue, or taking a backward step. Just three days after a double overtime game. Kelly Wilson. Draws the contact and will head to the line. How long do you reckon, how many more years do you reckon Kelly Wilson's playing for the, the WNBL? Uh, Amy, doesn't feel like she's going away from us anytime soon. No, she's still so valuable to this team. Mm. You know, as I said, she's second in the league for assists, so she's not slowing down. I think her leadership above all and her smarts out there are always going to be valuable to a team. Um, so, I mean, I'll admit I'm a little bit of a Kelly Wilson fangirl. Right. Uh, I grew up playing against her, and, and I really love the way she plays. So I hope to see her out there for a couple more years at least. I think still a big role for the Bendigo Spirit, as Amy Rochi mentioned just then. He's Hawkins, though. Call for a second offensive foul of the night. And again, Maley draws the contact. A sort of confidence booster there for Adelie Maley to draw the two fouls there. She seems to be, um, you know, someone from Bendigo that is giving Hawkins a bit of a tough time. So that's a good matchup for them at the moment. So there's two fouls now against Hawkins. Maybe she might be her own worst enemy. That's the only way she's going to slow down is offensive fouls. Is Kelly Wilson again. We are seeing Kelly Wilson put a team on her back here and do the scoring herself. Such a selfless player normally, but she is taking on the responsibility tonight. Here's a Kuzo in her natural habitat underneath the rack. Such a powerful player in the post. Lady, what a find inside. Mario ran straight into. The Yakuza wall. Lavey. Tough attempt. Mailey with the rebound. All oxygen. Hawkins brings it down. Tough game. Steph Reed now with the ball in her hands. Hawkins trying to create some movement. Creates a three ball opportunity for Reed. And Akuzo strong. Up high. They have caught. Of the face there as she was attempting that offensive rebound. The foul is called on Bendigo. I don't mind that defense by the Bendigo spirit on the on ball there. You know, Steph Reed's at her best when she's going downhill. She can finish at the rim, she can find her shooters on the outside. So, you know, going under and daring her to shoot that three is probably their best bet at the moment. Just uh, the first few months of the season, Zatina Rakuzo through injury, but really making a big impact for Townsville off the bench back half of this season. Nicholson open for two. That's what was there. Yeah, there's a foul off the ball. Bendigo player hit the deck. I think it's an offensive foul. They're looking at it now. McKay is arguing her case with the referee. Here's a look. McKay was calling for an unsportsmanlike. I think it uh, went her way. Shannon Seabom. Words with the referee. We'll have an inbounds pass, though, from the baseline. Ultimately, it'll be a Bendigo ball. Uh, coaching performance. This has been by Shannon. Spoke to someone in the industry during the week, and he rec they reckon that uh, Shannon is coaching better as the season goes on. And adjusted and style that really suits his lineup. What a pass inside from Mailey. Akuzo thought she had all ball. She gives away the foul. There's a look. She may have had a case. She will head to the bench. But it is great to see Amy a fit and firing Zatina Akuzo. She's uh, such a powerful player in the WNBL. She is. Once she gets in that key and gets a defender on her back, there's not much you can do to stop her. There's Kelsey Griffin. So she has got the uniform on. 
You saw we just uh, next to Coach Kennedy Green with us there. But, uh, unlikely to suit up tonight. That's what uh, Bendigo announced in the lead up. Woods inside Nicholson all by herself. And just a miscommunication there on defence from Bendigo gives Nicholson the easy bucket. Great poise from Nicholson there too to just up fake, get Ali Wilson in the air and finish. Nice to travel there from Maley. Lady for Ali Wilson. It's the screen from McKay, but no one to pass to here. McKay provides an option eventually. Good poise and patience again shown by McKay. She gets two. Bendigo hanging in there. As McSpadden steps onto the floor here for the Townsville Fire. Nicholson grits the teeth, puts the shoulder down and drove her way inside, but no love off the glass for her. Ali Wilson kicks it all the way out. Lady thought about the three. Instead for McKay, for Ali Wilson, for the triple. Good look. And Annalie Maley just had a, trying to rip it away there from Courtney Woods, but she was first to the ball. And uh, gave away the foul. It's a typical Annalie Maley, though, that desperation off the offensive glass. Yeah, she does not give up on that O-board until, you know, someone's definitely got it in their hands. Timeout called at the Townsville Entertainment Centre, and this timeout is brought to you by Signet. This game has been a cracker so far between the fire and the spirit. So for the fans tuning in from home or on the go, make sure your Signet charging products are ready to power up your devices because you don't want to miss a second of the action. Check out the extensive range of, range of Aussie-designed digital accessories right for you at Signet.com. This game interestingly poised as well, Amy, at, uh, at, at this time, at a couple minutes left. How, this is a crucial couple minutes coming up for, for Bendigo if they can get a couple of stops in particular. Yeah, absolutely, and it's always nice to go into half-time with a little bit of momentum. So, you know, 10 points isn't much. If they can just edge that back a little bit, focus on the defensive end, get some stops, take some good shots at the other end, then they can come into half-time feeling pretty good about themselves. What have you liked from Bendigo's game so far, particularly early on, that you, you want to maybe try and see them uh, re-implement back into, the, into their game as, uh, as, it, as it progresses? I mean, their pick and roll looks really good, whether it's... Um, Kelly Wilson, Ali Wilson, anyone coming off that, they're drawing Townsville's um, big defender and able to get that drop-off pass for a layup. I think that's been really good for them so far. Ten-point advantage for Townsville. A minute and a half left in this first half. And Abby Cabillo feature coming up in the Indigenous round at halftime. McSpadden had it knocked away from her by McKay. She read that superbly... The Bendigo big on that occasion. Can they pounce at the other end? Levy thought about the corner triple. Drove hard inside and earns a trip to the free throw line. Talk about handy players off the bench. They don't come much handier as well than Tessa Levy, who played a number of years with Amy at uh, out there in uh, Dandenong in, uh, in Southside as well. Obviously had uh, stints in in the AFLW, but uh, she can still make a huge impact at, uh, at WNBL level. She can. We played them um, last week, and, and Levy's ability to use her speed and get downhill is is really, really elite, and she's shooting the three ball pretty well at 45%, so uh, very handy off the bench. Both teams in the bonus with just over a minute remaining. Both teams have hit the, uh, the five fouls in both quarters so far as well, so lots of feeling out there. Tough physical game of hoops. Nicholson works her way into the key, falls short, and another stop for Bendigo. Ali Wilson, Kelly Wilson, mainly streaming forward, but a look here for Levy. Couldn't continue that hot three ball form, but Kelly Wilson with the offensive rebound. Big opportunity here for Bendigo. Mainly screaming for it on the outside. Three to shoot here for Kelly Wilson. And in the end, good defense from Townsville forces the shot clock violation with 29 and a half left in the second term. Another timeout just before halftime here is called with the Townsville Fire leading by 
nine points. As I mentioned, great to have uh, Amy Rochi in the expert analysis uh, chair tonight. Now, Amy, we've been hoping for a comeback from you to see you back on the floor out for the Southside Flyers all season. Uh, what is the, the state of play with uh, with your injury that's unfortunately kept you out for, for most of the season? I wish it was better news, um, but I was uh, hoping to be back for finals. Um, but unfortunately, my, my eight-week scans didn't show what the, what the medical team was looking for. So um, I won't be back out on court this season, but I'll definitely be on the sidelines cheering the Southside Flyers on for what I hope is a, a very successful finals run. It is, a, it is a shame you are one of the, the best players off the bench in the, in the WNBL and, and bring such a, such a spark. But I suppose it, how difficult is it sometimes to, to when, you, when, you are, when you can't do anything out there on the field, particularly when you're captain of the, of the club as well, you, you can't have that, you know, that influence like you know, Kelsey Griffin's experiencing tonight. How difficult is that when your team is going towards a top four opportunity? Yeah, it's been challenging. I think, um, you know, getting voted captain was a massive honour, but there's only so much you can do from the mm. sidelines. I would have loved to have had a bit more of an impact, but, um, you know, trying to be a good te teammate and do what I can. Four second differential between game clock and shot clock here, and Shyla Hill steams her way through and gets the two, and we've got 10 seconds left. Townsville take an 11 point lead just before half time. Can Bendigo get it back under 10? Maley for three. It was a wonderful pass, well executed offense from Lady, but Maley couldn't connect. And at half time, Townsville take a 49 to 38 lead after a 21 to 13 second quarter. It's all been about Tiana Hawkins. 24 points in the first half, including 19 at quarter time. Well, it is Indigenous round in the WNBL and one of the proudest Indigenous athletes in the competition is Abby Cubillo, who we caught up with a little earlier this week. know about the WNBL, you know. Steps to the left, takes it all the way to the Darwin was sort of my whole world, but I also was lucky enough to have a coach who had connections in Sydney. He found a school and then it was like really fast from there. It was like you're going to boarding school in this many weeks. It was pretty much a whirlwind and it's felt like that ever since. It always feels like a refreshing feeling to get back here and spend that limited time that I generally do have. So for the artwork, you know, it's representation of you and your, your character. So is there any women that yeah. also influenced you? on your, your journey? Obviously my mum and sisters have had a massive impact on me. My nana as well has been like really influential. Like her life story, being a part of the stolen generation is just crazy. So I think that resilience that I have definitely stems from her and her guest life stories. It seems pretty crazy to have kids look up to me. I guess highlighting the Indigenous athletes, I think, gives them a realistic pathway to be able to achieve at the highest level. I think sport's such a great platform to be able to do that and use people that younger kids already look up to and put them in this light and say, we want to celebrate this as a nation. Great movement, easy bucket. George for three. Melbourne's off and running. A nice pass to Burrell. That's great play there from the Caps. Melbourne's got to go. Does she realise she has to go? Puts it up from long range. Oh, of course she knows she has to go. Shot clock ticks down below 10. Melbourne goes to work and gets the finish. <laughs> and lets out the biggest scream. And the crowd get up and about because the Canberra Capitals have won their second game of the season in front of a delighted National Convention Centre. Draws a crown, leaves Woods wide open and they pay the price. Give me 
screaming for it on the inside. Tapped away by Reed, who is starting to really assert her authority. Goes to work on Sherp, gets it to go. Count the points, she's going to the line for an extra. Now this one. Reed's brought it very quickly in for Hawkins. Eyes like a Tiana Hawkins. Inga Kahia here on the wing. Puts it behind her back. Pretty move off the window. Probing. Assessing her options. Six seconds. Goes herself to the rack. Manga car here. Kayla Thornton makes her move in the lane. Just misses. Oh, so close. And the Flames have come into Melbourne and stolen victory at John Kane Arena. Team, you would never know that this is the very first time ever that a WNBL game has been at John Kane Arena. This is like a well rehearsed crowd. It is actually nuts in here. I don't think I've ever heard it this loud. And I've been here for many different events. So well done to the WNBL crowd. Clearly passionate and clearly having a ball. It's the biggest WNBL season yet, and superstar Lauren Jackson returns. Turn it up. Don't miss a block, basket, or game winner. Just not steal the win. WNBL, live on 9 now. Do not underestimate the power of a good blind. Take this exhausted couch. Now it stands before you, mm, magnifique. Even this cocktail of dead skin is gracefully waltzing. Da, 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 da. DIY blinds change the ugly. I'm so ready for love. Australia's biggest social experiment. Oh my god. <laughs> It's not easy to meet girls when you're like 900 k from civilization. He's on nine now. I look like the girl next door. I'm actually a little freak in the sheets. Stream every new episode of The Love Phenomenon. Completely free. Whenever you want. Let's get married. New Married at First Sight on nine now. Gossip Girl here, your one and only source into the scandalous lives of Manhattan's elite. XOXO Gossip Girl. Get your summer streaming on 9 Now. So, baby, in 90 days, we're going to be husband and wife. I was with her for five days, and then I proposed to her. She's so eager to be in love, she lets red flags just go. People say, 19 year old, she's just using you. Maybe she could be. 90 Day Fiance. Get your summer streaming on 9 Now. Tune in to the WNBL show dropping weekly during the season and released across your favourite podcast network every Tuesday. Or watch the full vodcast at WNBL.basketball. You're like MVP. I'll we never get used to that, by the way. That's a bit strange. <laughs> we can always come to you for a great <laughs> inspirational quote. Join me, Megan Hustray, and my team of co-hosts, stars across the league, as we talk about everything that's happening on and off the court in the Signet WNBL. That's way more than I thought. More. Slip celebrity, celebrity, snogging with the stars. More. Exciting. Shocking. Unhinged. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. I don't mean dramatic, but should we call an ambulance? <laughs> uh, and more, more Sophie Mung. New The Hundred. <laughs> High five. What is happening? The new season of The Hundred. Stream the latest episodes on Nine Now. Think about the lives wrecked. 
This man isn't a forensic pathologist. He's a charlatan. One of Australia's most senior politicians on the payroll of the Mafia. It's the worst question in the world to ask somebody. Do you think your mother killed your father? Conspiracies, murders, cover-ups. Australia's most astonishing cases go under investigation. Stream the latest episodes on Nine Now. When you look at the elite levels of basketball, there's a lot of pathways at that level. But when you talk about community grassroots, it's a lot harder, I think, to sort of break through that barrier. But I think this platform is trying to sort of bridge that gap. This platform really starts to drive pathways and opportunities, particularly around the pillars of, of coaching, officiating and administrating. That's why this platform is important to me. second quarter she had 19 in the first and only five in the second yep. so that's a job well done I think now they've got to try and slow down all those other guards that are sort of contributing across the board like they don't that you know Nicholson's only on nine Reed's on four heel on six but you know all three of them are contributing so they really need to lock down on their individual scouts um, get some stops and get out and run big second half coming up for the Bendigo spirit they want to try and keep their you know, top four hopes alive. Perth coming hard, the Bendigo Spirit. Being one of the form teams of the comp, one of the best teams in the comp for most of this season. They have uh, a team in the Perth Lynx nipping at their heels as well. Three losses in a row for Bendigo in the lead up to this match as well. And they're running into the hottest team in the comp as well in the Townsville Fire. Eight wins on the trot. They're in position A if they want to make it nine wins as well. Great crowd in Townsville on a Saturday night. Fans always get behind their local team. Haven't heard the cowbell too much tonight. That's normally a feature of all Townsville games. I'm sure it's in somewhere. It might only come out for 
Townsville 49 to the Bendigo Spirit 38. I haven't heard the cowbell as much since they moved venues. Mm. So I don't know if they brought them with them or not. We'll put our investigative hats on during the week and find out about that. Just having some tech problems, it looks like, just at, uh, at the sidelines for the moment. So both teams will reassess now. We can see Kelsey Griffin in the in the t-shirt likely to play tonight. So just uh, waiting for a scoreboard issue at the moment as well. So that is being worked out on the sidelines. So tomorrow, a big couple of games coming up tomorrow in the WNBL, including the Amy Rochi Southside Flyers going up against uh, the Perth Lynx. Amy, that is a reasonably significant game for your side, particularly for, for Perth, you need to keep winning as well, but it's important for you guys to keep the Ws coming. Absolutely. We've only got the, the three games left for the season, so every win from here on out is very valuable. Um, we'll definitely be looking to, to show up, you know, switched on, because as we know, the Perth Lynx have a lot to play for, trying to sneak their way into finals, so they'll be ready to go, um, but so will we. What's the vibe been at uh, training in the last uh, couple of weeks as you get towards the, the back end of the season? You know finals are uh, you know, really, really close, just, to, just around the corner. There's sort of the, the vibe and intensity got to another level towards the back end of a regular season. It does. I think everyone can feel how important every game is. Um, you know, the pressure of the ladder and everyone being so close. You know, we need a fight to get that top two finish as well, as we talked about. You want you want that home court advantage coming into the semi-finals. It's it's so valuable. Um, so you know, if we can get those next three wins, we put in our, put ourselves in a really good position to do that. And the Southside Flies have Perth uh, next. In fact, uh, they're, all three of their remaining games are at home as well. In a reasonably big, Mel big Melbourne derby against the Melbourne Boomers, and then the Fire. You're finishing with five very tough, uh, three very tough games, the, the South Side Flyers. We'll talk a little bit more post-game about the run home for the, the five sides that are all trying to squeeze uh, into four spots. This includes the Townsville Fire, who currently sit on top of the of the WNBL ladder, and of course, uh, the Bendigo Spirit as well. Who, uh, not after this game, after this game, they take on the Perth uh, Perth Lynx in an absolutely crucial in a, in a crucial game then. But let's have a look at uh, the WNBL ladder as we just uh, continue to wait for a, uh, the scoreboard here at the Townsville Entertainment Centre just to, to flick over and uh, be corrected to the Townsville Entertainment Centre. That is the, the state of play. This is obviously before uh, tonight's results on a live ladder. This is uh, prior to tip-off tonight. Townsville in first with uh, the Southside Flyers uh, second, and then Melbourne, Bendigo, and Perth as well. It's uh, there's, in, from a ladder perspective, there's not much separating the, those top three teams, Amy. But you, you sense as well that on the court as well, those three teams in, in, in on any floor in, in the competition, uh, it, it's anyone's game because there's just so many high quality players. Absolutely, um, and you know we all come up against each other in the in the run home to finals. So every game from here on out is going to be really high quality. You know, as we've mentioned, everyone fighting for you know top spot. So um, you know I'm excited to to be a part of our run, but I'm also excited just from a league perspective to see how this all plays out and how high quality the finals are actually going to be this year. It's going to be high quality, no doubt about that as well. And then also congratulations a little earlier today, the Adelaide Lightning. And we get uh, victory over the, the UC Caps as well. They were able to a break a, a pretty significant uh, losing drought as well. As uh, they were able to get the win over the UC Caps. So as I mentioned beforehand, it's be Southside against Perth tomorrow. The game there at the, uh, the State Basketball Centre. And then uh, Melbourne are flying up to Sydney to take on the Flames as well. Important that the Boomers continue to, to rack up the victories as well. They've got a few games uh, to come, Melbourne, uh, tonight. Uh, after tonight, they've got to four games to play still. They play the Flames twice, the Flies, and then uh, the, the UC Capitals as well. So really important there for the Melbourne Boomers. So the They've got, uh, it's almost like it's uh, pre-game at the, at the moment, with all the, the basketballs and all the sportings out there in, in a bit of a warm-up. There is uh, the road to the finals. Uh, this is uh, the the Townsville fire after tonight's game against the, the Bendigo Spirit. They take on the Flames and Spirit, and then the, a huge game to finish against the, the Southside Flyers 
uh, as well. And then obviously the flyers with the Lynx and the Boomers and the Fire to come as well. All top four teams for the South Side Flyers. The, 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 I suppose from the from Melbourne Boomers perspective, there's no easy games as well, but the fact they're playing Sydney uh, twice and the, the, the Capitals as well, they'll certainly go into those games as the favourites. And then it just goes to show why tonight is so important for the Bendigo spirit because they've got two very tough games coming up. Scoreboard has been fixed. We're underway. Thanks for sticking with us on nine now. It's the Townsville Fire with an 11-point lead over the Bendigo Spirit, 49 to 38. Nicholson works her way into the key and lays it in for two. Nice patience from Loz there, really reading the D well. Great to have the company on nine now. It's the Townsville Fire and the Bendigo Spirit on Saturday night in Townsville. Alicia Froling streaming through the key there. We'll be heading to the charity strike to shoot a couple. And it's been interesting. Meg McKay has come off the bench and actually played more minutes tonight than Alicia Froling as well. Any sort of theory behind that, Amy, as to, as to why Meg might have a few more minutes up her sleeve than, than Alicia, even though Alicia's been scoring very well tonight? Yeah, she's been playing really well. I think, um, you know, as we said, pre-game, um, we kind of assumed that Megan McKay would need to step up a little bit in this game, purely just due to Bendigo being a little bit undersized. Um, so at the defensive end, she can really help out, clog up the key a little bit more and compete with the boards. We get the second free throw attempt to go there. Alicia Froling. He's Hawkins for Reed. Nicholson screaming for it on the perimeter there. Now she has a good look, Laura Nicholson. And you don't want to give Laura Nicholson too many open looks from the three-point territory. And then Hawkins almost pinched it off. The Bendigo Spirit. Instead, she's given away her third personal foul of the night. Maybe, as we mentioned in the second quarter, she might be our own worst enemy. It's the only thing that's going to stop her from having a monster night on the scoreboard. Yeah, that really hurts them. This will be interesting to see what Shannon Seabom does because it's very early in the third to be carrying your third foul. Where are? Well, she can shoot nicely from inside the <laughs> perimeter as she shows there. Lovely finish from Abby Werung. And against the grain for the Bendigo Spirit. She definitely isn't shooting the two-point bat. I just thought it was impressive that she shoots a three-point better. Uh, uh, like what you brought <laughs> to the table. Oh, Steph Reed. That's nice, Steph. All class. And continue to watch the young star not just emerge, but just improve with every minute that she plays. Whether it's bringing a teammate in the game or scoring herself. Where are Mailey thought about the triple, then put it up in Roof's face. And that is what Bendigo coach would be wanting, seeing Alicia Froling compete hard there for the offensive rebound. We're a little perplexed by the call off the rebound, though. I don't think Mailey should hesitate to take that three there. You know, she's got Roof matching up on her and giving her a little bit of space. And I think that's because she knows that Mailey might have that speed on her. So if she takes that and can make a couple of those, force Roof to get a little bit closer to her, then her drive will open up. Just confirming the reason sort of behind our uh, quite delayed start to the third quarter is that the fouls had it ticked over from on the scoreboard from uh, the previous quarter as well. As uh, Michaela Roof drives to the line and will head to, to the free throw line, drives the bucket rather than hit the free throw line. And that's pretty important because in tonight's game, we've had both teams going into the bonus in the first two quarters as well. And we've already had uh, three fouls to start off uh, this quarter as well between these two sides. It's interesting to see Shannon Seabom trusting Hawkins out there too with her third mm. foul. Maybe trying to get the scoreboard advantage done, done and dusted early. Try and uh, put a nail in the coffin as early as possible, but 17 minutes and 48 seconds is a long time in a basketball game. One of two for Michaela Roof from the charity stripe. Kelly Wilson along the baseline, guarded here by Reed. Hoping for a cut from Froling. She'll spin and want to use her left hand here, but Roof. 
Dodson showed terrific defense there. Then got the rebound, almost turned it over, but that's a big defensive win there from Michaela Roof. A little bit of stagnant offense there from Bendigo. You know, they need to get the ball moving. They've got so many guards that can get downhill, so I'd love to see them attack a little bit more. Guards in the court now, Kelly Wilson, Ali Wilson, and Werung as well. Natalie Maley often plays like a guard. Nicholson trying to get rid of Werung here. Easier said than done. To switch there defensively to Abby Werung, and they force a late shot in the shot clock, but just the fumble gives them a fresh 14 here, Townsville. And a defensive effort, though, for the Bendigo Spirit. It's a 16-point differential, and Steph Reed is in her natural habitat here. She loves this situation, and she draws two free throws just before the end of the shot clock. Very crafty move to, to draw the foul there. It didn't really look like she had anywhere to go. Kelly Wilson looked like she was in pretty good position, but, you know, just got her at the end there. It's an exciting time for, for young guards in, a, in Australian basketball as well. You know, you speak to, you know, former Opals like Jenny Screen, who said there's, there's probably been a little bit of a, of a chasm of sort of a, the top quality, um, world-class guards for, for Australian basketball in recent times. But you think of not only Steph Reed, but, uh, but Jade Melbourne as well. Dallas Luffridge, who hasn't been part to, of, uh, of your Southside lineup this year due to, due to injury as well. But it just, it just seems an absolute plethora of uh, young star Aussie guards at the moment, Amy. Absolutely. That spot really opened up when, uh, you know, Katie Ebsery retired. Leila yep. took some time away to, mm. to have a baby. Oh, nice, nice pass in there. So, yeah, that point guard spot's really opened up, and we've got lots, um, lots in the running to make that Opals team. Of course, Shyla Hill as, uh, as well from the Townsville Fire now. As Samuelson gets a look for three and can't get it to go. That is only Carly's second three-point attempt, and we're two and a half quarters in this game. Ali Wilson, it seems like she's had the matchup on her for most of the night, and she's done a terrific job curtailing Clutch Carly's influence. Absolutely. I'd love to see, you know, two of the best three-point shooters out there are Samuelson and Wirung. Yep. Um, and we haven't seen them have many attempts, so, you know, maybe they can they can start to try and get them some looks. Let it fly from deep. I think on the Opals point guards, too, it, it would be um, unfair not to mention, you know, Tiana Mangakahia, who, who's come back from breast cancer, and Maddie Rochi at the Southside yep. Flyers and my sister-in-law. So, um, you know, as you said, there's just plenty of them. Always good happen. Shameless family plug out there, but no, definitely Maddie is right in the conversation. Part of that 24 player extended Opal squad as well. Maddie Rochi. I think was also would be right in contention for the Susie Bakovic medal as well. You see Maddie Rochi, the south side flies. Third foul called on the fire in this quarter. Already three fouls on the spirit. Fouls in this game so far. Happy company wherever you're watching. Nine now to Townsville lead 59 to 43. Townsville looking for their ninth consecutive victory. Here's Kelly Wilson. For Werung, it's the screen from McKay who's back out on the floor. Pick and roll action didn't quite come off there, and Akulo couldn't quite win it back cleanly. But then she put her body on the line and won it back. That was awesome. Well done, Satina. That was fantastic on ball defense, and then to dive on the loose ball. Great job. Gives them a fresh 24 seconds here. Shyla Heel is looking for Nicholson in the corner. Lady knocks it out of bounds, but that was brilliant from Zatina Akuzo. Not only powerful underneath the rack, but can be devastating as well. Trying to win the ball back, and the ball was right in play. Hawkins back amongst the scorers. Off the inbounds pass, it's all nylon on that attempt. Takes her tally of 26 points for the night. Timeout called at the Townsville Entertainment Centre. And this timeout is brought to you by DIY Blinds to fit out your home with Australian-made designer quality window furnishings at the best prices. Head to diyblinds.com.au to order your free samples today. So this game now, 
just from a scoreboard perspective, starting to get away from the Bendigo Spirit. Townsville 61 to the Bendigo Spirit 43. It's a mightily impressive performance so far, Amy, from Townsville, con considering it was only three days ago that they were... You know, there hasn't been too many WNBL games in recent times that have gone to double overtime, but you, you wouldn't know they are playing with plenty of pace and with plenty of energy in this game. That's right, and I did wonder whether there would be a fatigue factor tonight, but I think it's done the opposite. I think it's given them the positive momentum they need coming into this game. Um, you know, different people are stepping up. They're, they're so deep, so um, I just I just hope the Bendigo spirit, you know, stick with this. It's still a long time, and you're not going to win it back in, in five minutes. You've got to start chipping away slowly and, and turn it into a game for the fourth quarter. It's definitely possible. Hawkins with the 26 points, as you just saw on your screen just beforehand. Nicholson with 14. So they've got 40 of Townsville, 61 points. Samuelson yet to hit the scoreboard. Being arguably the, the hottest player in the league in with the past couple of weeks is Kelly Wilson. McKay collide, but that was courtesy of some Charlie Hill contact. So another foul against uh, the fire. Charlotte absolutely stoked to be back with the Townsville Fire. And he, uh, had, uh, some, was thinking about some opportunities and some offers after parting ways with the Sydney Flames to go overseas. The, the lure of playing under Coach Shannon Seabomb was, was too strong and what a terrific pickup she has been and will continue to be at the back end of this season. One to shoot here for Werrung. Couldn't float it in. Good defensive set there from the Townsville Fire. Here's Samuelson. Gets around Werung. Hawkins, Akuzo. Double team there. Nicholson back out for heel. Brilliant. Awesome from Shyla Hill. That's a shame. Tessa Levy just did everything in that possession. She uh, she helped on the drive. She closed out the three. She contained the drive again. Um, just unfortunate that at the end there to Shyla to get that layup. It's an offensive foul against the, the Bendigo Spirit. As we turn our attention to the WNBL Awards Night, which is back after a two-year hiatus, the Signet WNBL Awards Night, all thanks to Foot Locker this year. Come and join in the celebrations with the players, game officials and sponsors. Get your, your selfie and autograph with Amy Rocci while you're there as we celebrate the season highlights and announce the Susie Bakovic medalist for the 2022-23 season. Head to WNBL.basketball for tickets. That'll be at the Medallion Club at Marvel Stadium. Only a couple of weeks' time. Quite remarkable to think that the end of the regular season is a stone's throw away. It always goes really fast. Tessa Levy just a little proppy after keeping some contact. Found his court. And again, both teams find themselves in the bonus as well. And we've still got three minutes and 45 seconds left in this third quarter. I often see a, a game of uh, WNBL hoops where both teams for three consecutive quarters flirt with the bonus. Meanwhile, Zatina Acuso is at the charity stripe. A big game against the UC Capitals on the 27th of Dan, 20 points. And she was constant. That was one of her big strengths that night was to actually get to the free throw line. She had six free throw attempts that night. She already been at the free throw line a couple of times tonight as well for the Townsville Fire. Ali Wilson, that is just pure guts and determination. That's some better movement at the offensive end for the Benigo Spirit as well, and that's what you want to see. Drag the big plays out of the key and get Ali Wilson, Anna Lee, Levy, Weirung, all yep. get them downhill towards the rim. Four points now for Wilson. She's had, got seven assists tonight. And here is Akuzo, catches, books it in. And that's what I was saying earlier. When she has a defender on her back inside the key, there's not much you can do to stop her. You've got to get around in front and try and deter the pass from going in in the first place. Is Maley getting inside and drops in that mid-range too. Again, better offense from Bendigo. Tough shot too, that fadeaway by Maley. 
better said than done. So opportunity here for the Townsville Fire. Nicholson. Intercepted. Chopped off here by Maley. Goes to work here on Sanderson. Pulls up, hits the two, draws the contact, and will head to the line for an extra. That is the kind of play that can really inspire your team. That's the momentum swing they need right there. Some good offense, getting some stops, forcing turnovers, and then running it down in, in offensive transition. Had the opportunity potentially to take on Samuelson and drive to the bucket. Instead pulled up for the mid-range two. Nailed it. And nails the three-point play to draw it back to 16 points with two and a half left in the third quarter. Here's Hawkins, guarded by Maley. Trying to bring Samuelson into the game. Still yet to score. Here is Hawkins with her own little fade away at the other end. That's tough. That's good D by Maley. Just a little bit undersized. 28 points for Tiana Hawkins. And McKay has been really efficient inside tonight, particularly underneath the rack, gets that one to go. Meg McKay tonight is five of five from the field. McKay typically is a really efficient player too. She shoots the field goal at 58%. So and there you go, Maylie again in transition. She's bringing the spark the Bendigo Spirit need right now. Reigning MVP, with an, inspiring a nice little run here for the Bendigo Spirit. Uh, it's a foul on Ali Wilson, much to her dismay. It's a shame they're in the bonus here because it makes that foul, you know, send them to the line. But I actually don't mind the intent by Ali Wilson. They're yep. trying to get up the floor, cause a bit of defensive pressure. Um, you know, they need to try and force some turnovers and get out and run. This is Carly Samuelson at the free throw line. One of the best free throw shooters in the WNBL. She only missed... This is the one thing you learn, Amy. You don't want to put the commentator's curse on there, but you don't want to hide the facts that she's only missed one free throw so far this season, and that trend continues. There you go. <laughs> An important two free throws for Carly Samuelson because that uh, not only gives them a 16-point advantage, but she also hits the scoreboard for the first time tonight. She's been in some hot form, at least 12 points in every game since January 7 this year, including a 31 the other night against the Melbourne Boomers. Akuzo again forces another turnover, and Hawkins couldn't catch it in rhythm. Bendigo got a little bit lucky there. The, the, the pass was a little bit off. That was uh, That's what I was talking about earlier with Tiana Hawkins, and her ability to get out and run. Almost came off there. Bendigo breathed a sigh of relief. 66 seconds remaining in this quarter. Lady calling for it in the post here with uh, Shyla Hill. That's a nice pass. McKay couldn't get the reverse to go. And Steph Reed has got Woods to her right. Pulls up though and will reassess. Oh, Woods is on her own. Bit too slow to get it there. Lady equal to the task, but she might go herself here, Courtney Woods, and Lady gives away the foul. And Courtney Woods will head to the charity stripe. Again, Courtney Woods talked about her improvement as the, as the season has gone on, particularly we saw her at her best against Perth when she had the, the 20 points, including three of five from three-point territory from, and six rebounds as well. She thrived with the extra responsibility. But, played 34 minutes that night. I think she's the ultimate role player because she has the ability to contribute and go off when they're down players, but she also is able to contribute in the way they need her to when they've got their full roster. You need teammates like that out there. 20 points in the first game against Perth and three nights later, 22. As Lavey tried to pull off the clever play there, but had a bit too much juice on the pass from Meg McKay. They, uh, we really have seen a lot of bench minutes tonight from Tessa Levy and Meg McKay so far. Both have played, well, basically, they've basically been on the court at the same time, really. I mean, sub in at the same time, sub out at the same time. Reed. Oh, Thompson have the way there. Just demand the ball with 14 seconds 
left in the quarter. Five second differential between the two clocks. Akuzo trapped. So Bendigo can have the last say of the third quarter. At least give them some momentum heading in to three quarter time. I think Tessa Levy thrives in these situations. Low clock. We'll probably see an on ball here for her nice and early and see if she can get downhill and, and get a layup to finish the third. Here I say this is Amy Rochi in her natural habitat buzzer beat <laughs> one of the areas as well. Here is there Tessa Levy. Good call, Amy. She gets the layup to go just before three quarter time and does get that bucket with. Bendigo now trailing just by the 16 points. There's a lot of points to make up, but anything can happen in this competition. It's Townsville 72 leading the Bendigo Spirit 56. Townsville still had a very good third quarter, 23 points to 18 in that third quarter, Amy. But we just did see the momentum switch ever so slightly towards Bendigo's favour and just give them a little bit of hope heading in to this fourth quarter. Yeah, and it's it's easy to, you know, get negative right now, but 10 minutes is a long time. Their field goal percentage has, has creeped up. Still not shooting the three-pointer very well, so they need to keep going to what's working. I think their on-balls, uh, Meg McKay setting big screens out there, get Tessa Levy, um, Kelly Wilson downhill. Kelly Wilson was, was putting points on the board in the first half. She was a bit quiet then. So, you know, stick with what's working um, and, and hopefully we see a bit of a closer game. It's interesting how Levy and McKay have, have made such an impact off the bench as well. It's a very strong starting five Bendigo ran with tonight with, with the two Wilsons, Froling, Werung and uh, Annalee Maley as well. I mean, we did see Annalee Maley start to hit the scoreboard a little bit more in, in that third quarter, but the, the, those, those bench players tonight of, of Levy and McKay, they, they've really made a, a big impact for for the Bendigo spirit, which is so handy heading towards uh, the finals. Yeah, and they, you know, they need to step up because without Kelsey Griffin, who, you know, provides points and steals, she's very consistent across the board. All those people need to step up. It was nice to see Anna Lee step up with the energy just then and get some steals and some layups. Um, they'll need that from her. We just saw on the stats that they're actually losing the rebounding count mm. quite significantly. So I think that can be a focus for them as well. So from a Townsville perspective, we, we you know, you look at the scoreboard perspective, they're, they're sitting they're pretty at the moment. They're up by 16 points at three-quarter time. They, they've won every quarter uh, so far tonight, particularly the second and third. They were quite dominant there. But from a playing pers perspective, how important is it from a, to, to make sure you're switched on, that you, that you want to try and you know, put the foot in the throat in this kind of situation? It's super important, and I think Townsville will do that. Um, you know, looking at their stats, they're actually really consistent um, across the quarters in majority of their games. Yep. So... Um, I don't see them taking the foot off the pedal. Well, Bendigo will have the ball at the start of this fourth quarter. I'll be hoping to try and get a couple of stops early to give them the best chance of sparking a comeback here. Stars everywhere that can help them do that. And Ellie Wilson finds Tessa Levy from the inbounds pass. So Levy starts this quarter. Following the big screen there. Ali Wilson works her way inside. Levy from way downtown. Couldn't get that one to go. The three ball just will not fall for the Spirit tonight. Certainly won't. One of eight from three point territory. So they have just crept onto the floor there. So, referee just has to delay the game momentarily. Those hands of uh, Kelly Wilson trying to pitch the ball away from sides for so many years. Still so fast and have to be very wary if you're a opposition team coming up against Kelly Wilson. Hawkins goes down inside. Mainly just lost her footing briefly there. Hawkins lays it in for two and she's got 30 for the Townsville fire. Goodness me, 30 at the start of the fourth quarter. We could be, could be seeing another 40 point game here. She had 33 against the Adelaide Lightning in her second game. So not quite a season high yet for Tiana Hawkins, but she can, is continuing her incredible back end this regular season. Here she goes again for three. Oh. All oxygen. 
She did play, we mentioned earlier, 50 minutes on yeah. Wednesday. So it'll be interesting to see how much Shannon leaves her out there. If they can manage to maintain this lead and he, he feels comfortable, I think the girl deserves a little bit of a rest. I reckon, I reckon <laughs> she does. It's, it's her efficiency in particular over the past six weeks. For the past six weeks, she's had gone at 50% or better from the field in each of her past six games. She is... Uh, continue to be one of the most efficient players in the league. That is an outstanding defensive play from Samuelson. Won it back and kept it in bounds. Now Steph Reed. Hawkins for heel. Driving hard and emphatically rejected away by Froling. And Bendigo capitalised at the offensive end of the floor. Annalee mainly missed and then Froling had it ripped away from her by Shire. Heel for Reed, who thought about the three. Kicked it out for Hawkins, who has 32. Absolute masterclass display this is from Tiana Hawkins. Their efficiency tonight is just amazing. Lavy lost her footing. It's been deep of her foot, unfortunately, so it will be turned over. This is this is a tough situation for Bendigo because I feel like they are playing quite well. Yep. The effort is there. They're making big defensive plays like we saw earlier. Anna Lee with that layup. Froling followed it up with an O-board. Um, but things just aren't quite falling. Just struggled to have an impact against those top teams as well throughout the season. The Bendigo Spirit considered big scores against the Boomers and the, the Southside Flyers as well has been probably a, a talking point amongst sort of uh, pundits and, and commentators in the around the spirit as they had this awesome start to the season but they were against uh, those wins were against teams that will probably end up in the, the bottom half of the, of the WNBL ladder and as they've run into the, into these sort of top sides in in recent uh, in recent months just have struggled to, to come up to that same level and so too, since Kelsey Griffin's been out, they've yeah. only managed the three wins, um, four losses. So, you know, obviously people have stepped up and they've got a great bench, but, you know, Kelsey Griffin, her calibre, losing her is massive. Kuzo driving baseline. There it is again. Can't stop that. She's pumped as well. Such a barometer, you sense, for the Townsville final. Not only on the court as well, but Amy, as, as you would know, so important to be a big celebrator on the bench as well as Zatina, particularly during her sort of first few years in the WNBL, was arguably one of the, the best celebrators off the bench. She's uh, obviously uh, matured in, uh, in recent times, but uh, she's such a passionate player and loves this Townsville club to bits. She is, and I can tell you, you do not want to be on the end of a Zatina Akusu block because yes. she'll give you the, uh, the two small celebrations. <laughs> Well, she's always been a very confident player in her first year in the in the league, you know, backing down and scoring on this Cambage. She's always been a very, very confident player. Continuing to get better. Great D by Steph Reed there to get in front. So undersized, but did not let the pass get in there. Hawkins streaming towards the basket there. Akuzo thought about a very rare triple attempt, and she would have hit that. We would have heard about that this <laughs> week. Here's Reed in a natural habitat. Oh, Akuzo wasn't expecting it. That's how quick Steph Reed's going at the moment, trying to find her teammates on the floor. I think Satina was setting a screen for a shooter in the corner there in Nicholson, yep. so she wasn't expecting the pass to come to her. Timeout has been called here at the Townsville Entertainment Centre. Zatina Akuzo walks to the bench. 11 points tonight for Zatina Akuzo. This time out is brought to you by Aussie Hoops. Aussie Hoops has been setting the basketball foundations for kids aged 5 to 10 for quite some time now. So whether your kids are basketball fans or simply looking to be part of a team, register them at Aussie Hoops to kickstart their basketball journey today. So looking at the, the stats, Tiana Hawkins with the, the 32 points and the fire going at 64% still 
from the field. They just uh, find good ways to hit good looks, Amy, or if they if they have tough they have tough shots, they've just dropped for them tonight, haven't they? Yeah, I think um, as a team, they actually have a really good field goal percentage across the season. They've got four players in the top 15 for field goal percentage yep. in McSpadden, Samuelson, Acuso, Hawkins, and then Nicholson and Reed not far behind. So. I think when you've got good field goal percentage, it's a reflection of your ability to take good shots. Yep. Um, and because they're so potent, they don't really care who takes that shot as long as it's a good one. Hawkins going at 80% from the field tonight. Steph Reid, three of four from the field. Lauren Nicholson, six of nine as well. Shiley Hill, four of seven. Akuzo, five of six, all well above 50% tonight from the field. Those Townsville Fire players. Here's Mailey. Started to get going in that third quarter. The reigning MVP. Kelly Wilson for Maley. Again goes to the mid-range attempt. Runs into Reed. Can't win the offensive rebound and a jump ball is called. In possession arrow is with the Townsville Fire. Seems like a real great mix of youth and experience, Amy, on this Townsville lineup. We talk about sort of Steph Reed and, and Acuso and, and Woods players kind of in their early to mid mid twenties, and then sort of the experience of Hawkins and and Samuelson and Nicholson as well. Okay, Gaze off off the bench, you know, invaluable wisdom along with Michaela Roof. It seems like a really well balanced roster. Yeah, it does. I think Shannon's done a great job putting together this roster. Um, you know, they've got great leaders. I'll actually give a shout out to Kate Gaze if I can. It's, yes. her, it's her birthday today, oh. so happy birthday to Gazy. Um, but, you know, she doesn't play many minutes, but she is a leader in her own right. I, I got the pleasure of playing with her um, at the Flyers. So it's a really well balanced roster. Um, and I think, you know, looking from the outside in, they've got a really nice culture. Recently, uh, they ventured out to Kate Gaze's farm as well for a bit of uh, team bonding, which I think uh, went down pretty well. So had a team bonding experience where they went out on a, on a boat as well, which I don't think too many players fared too well. It was a pretty rough day out in the seas as uh, Nicholson drives along the baseline there and floats it in for two. And we've got a 20-point lead now for Townsville. You know, I have seen teams come back from this margin with this amount of time, but it does sort of feel like it's getting a little bit of out, out of reach for the spirit. That two would have been handy if Annalee Maley was able to hit it. Instead, Lauren Nicholson sprints down the other end of the floor. Kuzo. Seems parted for Z, and she lays it in. It's nice to see her form right now. You know, it takes a little while to feel like yourself again, coming back from injury and being out for so long. So it's good to see her play this way tonight. 13 points for Zizina Akuzo. Reed for Nicholson for three. That's a great pass by Steph Reed. Deserved an assist, but Nicholson couldn't quite hit on the triple attempt. Who came out there from Maley. She's kind of in this mode now, Anna Lee, where she's really putting her team on her back and trying to do it herself on the, on the inside. You, you back her considering her uh, recent couple of years, but she just gets in this mode where wants to uh, do it for her team. Her trip to the, the charity stripe. She's a competitor, Anna Lee Maley. I, I don't see her, you know, giving up until the final siren goes, no matter what the score is. So The kind of player you want to play with too. Absolutely. You'd love to have someone like her on your team. Um, like I said, her ability to get you extra possessions just from sheer effort on the boards. Converts those attempts. And they're still applying full court pressure here, so they're still getting after it, the spirit. Reed guarded here closely. Tessa Lady. She finds a way through. Can she find a teammate? Samuelson pass wasn't quite to her advantage. Nicholson runs into a wall here. One to shoot. And three seconds in the key. <laughs> she made it too. She did. She was devastated. Teammate spent too long in the key. And uh, they will get the ball back here, the Bendigo Spirit. With five minutes and six seconds remaining. Tiana 
Wilkins out the floor with 32 points to an eight. Lady can't float that in. Ball done by Froling to keep it alive, but unfortunately went straight down the throat of Reed for Samuelson, for Nicholson. This time from the corner, Loz hits. You know, how hard is the defensive matchup for Spirit tonight? Samuelson had that open, they ran yep. hard at her, and then the extra pass is to Lauren Nicholson, just as good on the three point line. So, you know, you've got to pick your poison, but they're just such a great team. Pretty scary what they're doing at the moment, the Townsville Five, this stage of the season. Abby Werung, the, the rushed attempt there for the three that had come off, and players everywhere hitting the floor. Hawkins and Levy. Froling and Roof as well off the ball. Roof just a little proppy to get to her feet. Foul is called as well. With the fire holding a 23-point advantage. It shows the competitiveness too. Like you look at the margin and you're still seeing players dive on loose balls and, and fighting for the ball. So, you know, good on the girls for, for fighting this one out. 32 points, 12 of 15 tonight from the field. Tian Hawkins, including four of six from three-point territory. Three steals as well. Most of those steals coming in the, the first quarter. She really set the tone at both ends of the floor with a 19-point first quarter. Yield running the point. Roof. Calls for some movement. Woods on the floor. This is Samuelson cutting towards the baseline. Seven to shoot now. Courtney Woods comes up with the play herself. For Hawkins for three. Even Tiana can't hit that. The defensive set there from the Spirit. Mailey for Kelly Wilson. He's trying to find Mailey again. And he'll pick that up and unfortunately stepped out of bounds. So it will be a Bendigo ball. Shyla played the, the 20 minutes and a half. And Kate Gaze is on the floor, Amy. There you go. She got a nice big big cheer from the crowd. I wonder if they know it's her birthday. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon they know. Happy birthday to Kate Gaze. she come up with a birthday bucket for us from Townsville. Offensive foul is called on Alicia Froling. I'd like to see them run a... Uh, a three-point play for Kate Gay straight up here. She'll just come on, let's get her into the game nice and quick. Gee, Alicia Froling not happy at all with that. No, not happy one bit. Sarkas me thinking that uh, round of applause. I think that's her fifth foul, so she, uh, she fouls out Alicia Froling. She checks out with 12 points to her name, just the one rebound. Hawkins for Gaze. He's cutting towards the rack there. Shyla Heel. Shows off the handles. Couldn't quite make it in off the glass. Here's Mailey behind the back. Oh, nice move. Fading away. Couldn't get it to drop. Deserved a bucket and a lead. Didn't quite the lucky roll. Can they feed the veteran here, Kate Gaze? Roof. Kicks it out for Woods. For Heel. Again, puts the ball on the floor. And lost control. We're on, again playing that tight defence. Not allowing any easy shots for Shyla Heel. Abby Weirung is such a well-rounded player. I think she's, you know, she's come along so much in the last few years, as you saw there. Her defense is amazing, but, um, you know, the three ball, as we spoke about, she's quick. She can, you know, get on the rim. So I'm really liking Abby Weirung's season this year. The timeout called at the Townsville Entertainment Centre. This is heading towards now definitely a Townsville victory. Townsville holding an 85 to 62 lead. It's been a pretty complete performance Certainly since quarter time, they had a 26-25 lead, Townsville, at the main break. But at 23-13 uh, second quarter, really did set it up from there. And they just continued to grind away and, and be relentless, Amy, as, as they've gone on. And they're not the first team, uh, Bendigo, to, to cop a relentless outing from, from Townsville. They're really hitting form at the right time of the year. They are, for sure. Um, they're so hard to guard. And... Um you know, I would actually really like to see if they play some more of their bench here and, and yep. reward some of those girls. 
Um, but it is very impressive that they've managed to come off the back of that massive win on Wednesday and then front up and get this win here. And Tiana Hawkins played the 50 minutes the other night. She's played 33 tonight, going at the point a minute as well. 32 points for her. We might see a bit more of the likes of, uh, of Kate Gaze, maybe even uh, Nishaya Parker-Williams as well, who would love to get some court time in Indigenous round in the WNBL. Still plenty of uh, time left for a couple of players off the bench. Maley. Never looked good off the hand. An easy rebound for Courtney Woods, who almost turned it over. Kelly Wilson not letting up until the final buzzer. Gives away the foul, though, does the veteran. She's played a good game tonight, Kelly Wilson. I think she's uh, had to step up in the absence of Kelsey Griffin, probably putting more points on the board than she was beforehand. She yep. sort of takes the role as the facilitator majority of the time, but it's been good to see her aggressive tonight. Heel gets the double team here. Trying to go with a little half-court press here to get, get something going. Kuzo trying to float that in. And the fire stepped out of bounds. Trying to grab the rebound. So Abby Werung will bring it in with two minutes, just over two minutes remaining in this game. She had a blistering start as well, but they really have shown their class as the game has worn on Townsville. Cassie McLean on the court. Now as well, trying to feed McKay on that occasion. And McKay taps it away from McSpadden. Still a Townsville ball with 17 seconds remaining on the shot clock. McLean guarding Gaze here. McSpadden couldn't handle it. And that will be a, an inbounds pass here for Kelly Wilson. We found out tonight, and you're right, she's the number one ticket holder to the Kelly Wilson fan club as well. Be a pretty big fan club, you think, Amy? I would hope so. She's pretty amazing. Courtney Woods comes up with a turnover here. McSpadden with an opportunity here. Backing down and couldn't quite get that one to go. So for the Kandra on the floor for Bendigo seeing some minutes here off the bench. Kelly Wilson v Heal. Tantalizing matchup here. Here is Lacandro from the corner. And Heal comes up with the rebound. So Bendigo in the bonus. With just over 60 seconds remaining. He's Gaze. McSpadden and not giving Kate Gaze any looks here in these last couple of minutes. The foul there is against Abby Werung, so they'll be heading to the line here, the Townsville Fire. I think they've got the scout on Kate Gaze that she's a shooter. They haven't let her come off anything <laughs> without trailing her heels nice and tight, so we'll see if she can get one off. And the Shea Parker Williams will come on for the final minute in Indigenous round. She Recently uh, travelled to the, the Northern Territory with Shanice Swain and Abby Cabillo as part of uh, a program there with, uh, sort of led by Adobe, with, uh, those WNBL players getting into the Indigenous communities. She spoke about that during the, the week and uh, she loved engaging with the community. Here's Parker Williams, great defence and comes up with a rebound and gets a great round of applause as well. The Townsville fans. Woods. Nice. It's um, it's a really, really amazing initiative that those girls got up to Northern Territory and in yep. Abby Cabillo's hometown. I've read something um, on pick and roll from Ali Wilson during the week about, you know, they're out there to inspire the next generation. So, you know, great job to those girls because that's what they are. They're women inspiring their communities and the next generation. And hopefully this Indigenous round really highlights that. Final 10 seconds, the Townsville fans on their feet. Kate Gaze on her birthday! Oh. Couldn't get it to go, that was the chance. I was up, Kate Gaze. I reckon she'll be celebrating pretty hard tonight, Kate Gaze, because on her birthday, Townsville have won their ninth game in a row and send another ominous message 
to the WNBL. Hugs all around for the birthday girl, and why not? Townsville on top and charging towards top spot on the ladder. 88 to 62, 62. Townsville get the win over Bendigo. And they just continue to impress with every game they play, Amy Rochi. I think that's a big statement by Townsville tonight. Um, I've said it a million times, but the way they've backed up and got two wins this round. Yeah, um, yeah they've definitely put the league on notice tonight. And after doing that double overtime only a couple of days ago, there's Tiana Hawkins on screen. She set the tone at the start of the game. 19 points in the first quarter on her way to 32. And just a lazy 12 of 16 from the field as well. And she played the, the 33 minutes. Not only is she a, a star, but she just seems like such a, a terrific athlete as well to, to run out the game so strong, Amy. She does. She's been a really, really great pickup for them this year. Um, you know, our, our imports across the league this year have yeah. such an impact. Um, so, you know, she's one of many. But, yeah, being a, being a massive impact for the Townsville Fire. Yeah, Tiana Hawkins and... Obviously, uh, your star as well, Kayla Thornton, has been, uh, been absolutely outstanding for the Southside Flyers. Speaking of outstanding, is Tina Acuso off the bench tonight had a terrific game. 13 points, seven rebounds, and five uh, steals as well. Uh, a big all-round night for Tina Acuso. Another confidence-boosting uh, night for her. It's great to see her out there with a with a smile on her, on her face. She's had a wretched run with the injury o o over the years, but. Uh, such a passionate player and uh, it's great for Aussie Hoops to see her fit and firing. Absolutely and one of the things I really liked about her game tonight, she did put points on the board and I made a few comments about her being really unstoppable in the key but her defence tonight was really Eight shots. at the Derby as well. Ben And fourth spot. It certainly will be an interesting watch. You'll catch all the action, of course, on uh, Nine Now. Two games tomorrow. You'll see both of those games on Nine Now. The Flyers and the Lynx. Huge top five game there. Perth trying to keep their finals hopes alive. And then we head north to Sydney as the Flames host the Red Hot Melbourne Boomers. Amy, it's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I have. Thank you so much. Amy Rochi debuting in commentary tonight, seeing the Townsville Fire get the win 
over the Bendigo spirit. On behalf of Amy and our entire hard-working team, this is Ben Waterworth signing off.